Hello students. In the last class, I explained about photorespiration, and today I am going to explain a new topic that is C4 pathway. As this C4 pathway was explained by Hutch and Slake, that is the reason why we call this C4 pathway as Hutch and Slake pathway. And this C4 pathway is also called as carbon dioxide. concentrating mechanism why i will tell you while i am explaining about the mechanism of the c4 pathway and automatically you will understand why it is called as carbon dioxide concentrating mechanism whereas the basic c4 pathway it is first of all identified by two scientists first scientist is kortschok and the second one is hart so kortschok and hart when they are working on sugarcane leaves that means they are observing the process of photosynthesis in sugarcane by using the radioactive uh, 14 carbon dioxide when they are they, they are examining the mechanism of photosynthesis in sugarcane leaves they got a surprising observation actually hope you remember because just in the last class only i explained about c3 pathway in c3 pathway uh, the first formed stable compound is phosphoglyceric acid which is a three carbon compound hope you remember na c3 pathway i explained it so clearly and this is c3 pathway me the first formed stable compound is phosphoglyceric acid which is a three carbon as the first stable uh, first stable compound is a three carbon pca that's why it is called as a c3 pathway whereas surprisingly in sugarcane leaves instead of three carbon phosphoglyceric acid they got four carbon oxaloacetic acid as the first formed stable compound in this pathway is a four carbon oxaloacetic acid that is the reason why it is called as c4 pathway and this oxaloacetic acid it is also called as dicarboxylic acid that is the reason why it is also called as d c a pathway hope you understood as the first formed stable compound in this pathway is a four carbon oxaloacetic acid that's why it is called as c4 pathway and the second point what i told is oxaloacetic acid is also called as dicarboxylic acid that is the reason why it is also called as dca pathway till now i gave three other names for achen slake pathway and anyway achen slake pathway why it is given i already told you while i am reading this name only because this pathway was clearly detailedly discussed by achen slake that is the reason why it is called as achen slake pathway and it is also called as a carbon dioxide concentrating mechanism and it is also called as a c4 pathway as the first formed stable compound is a four carbon oxaloacetic acid whereas oxaloacetic acid is also called as dicarboxylic acid that's why it is also called as dca pathway so these are the other names of C4 pathway and it was first of all identified by Kortschok and Hart, whereas the detailed description of this C4 pathway was given by Hutch and Slake. They are actually Australian uh, plant physiologists, and in the year 1967, while they are working on uh, this sugarcane and also maize leaves, they identified. this c4 pathway and they explained this c4 pathway in a detailed manner hope you understood again i repeat because a small confusion will be there first of all identified by kortschok and hart whereas detailedly explained by achen slake so uh, it is called as achen slake pathway hope you understood whereas c4 cycle it occurs in uh, more than 1500 species Uh, which were included under 19 families of angiosperms but surprisingly in this 19 families of angiosperms 
most of the monocots are included that means mostly of course it obviously it takes place in dicots also please try to understand what am i telling it takes place in dicots but when you compare the ratio between dicots and monocots uh, the monocot number is little more so that's what i wanted to actually tell you in monocots especially graminae and also cypressi families uh, which includes uh, several uh, what you call examples called sugarcane maize sorghum bajra etc i like these are many examples are there so these are all the best examples of monocots whereas i need to tell you one important point here rice is, is actually uh, actually it's a c3 plant but some physiologists by doing plant breeding they converted the c3 plant into c4 plant so this uh, this point students you please remember this point now i am leaving this point as like this only but again i am going to explain the same point in the strategies of food enhancement in that chapter again this point will come and then i will explain about what is plant breeding and what are the various techniques of plant breeding there i will explain this point in a very detailed way but for now just you remember a c3 plant actually sorry i'm really sorry a c3 plant uh, again i am a very sorry uh, this rice plant it is actually c3 whereas it is converted into c4 by various plant breeders now wheat and barley this uh, barley you know na, uh, usually uh, during summer this barley uh, it is used for body cooling okay so this barley seeds uh, not in another another way so there is another way also i don't want to discuss it uh, now okay which i don't wanted to discuss also uh, there is a traditional way to cool down our body especially in summer by using this barley seeds okay so this wheat and barley uh, which is a uh, monocot they both belongs to monocots but still they show c3 uh, what you call uh, uh, pathway only instead of c4 pathway whereas in dicots also euphorbia species this euphorbia group of plants they show this uh, c4 pathway uh, and amaranthus and also a triplex and also a portulaca like that so many examples so many examples actually are there for c4 pathway and uh, especially i need to tell you one point here a triplex in a triplex rosia it is showing c4 pathway whereas the same genus may a triplex uh, has data and also a triplex patula these two being uh, they they both actually belong to the same genus a triplex but still they are c3 plants this is one of the uh, tricky and a little surprising point same genus may say case of the mother of seeds basically based on their adaptations for example we are all same human beings someone like to eat some sweet items someone they need little spicy items someone they need very soft kind of things one or someone they need like a lot many varieties like that see we are all human beings but we are all having our own choices hai na like that uh, maybe due to different types of adaptations they are opting though they belong to the same genus also they are opting some are opting for c3 and some are opting for c4 hope you understood the introductory point of c4 pathway now i am going to explain the crunch anatomy what is crunch anatomy let me explain first of all crunch anatomy means see this is the uh, internal uh, cross section of the leaf the cross section of the leaf if you take the leaf it consisting of this is upper epidermis you can see na this uh, green color line this green color line it is called as cuticle and this uh, uh, a very pale color it's a kind of brownish white color and this layer it is called as upper epidermis whereas this uh, lower one lower green line you can see na this is cuticle and this is the lower epidermis so uh, both the sides the leaf it is covered by the epidermal layers whereas upper epidermis it is continuous whereas the lower epidermis it is interrupted by stomata okay for example if i show let us take i am i am i am explaining now uh, monocot then the scenario the uh, diagram it changes because here uh, if this is a dicot that's why 
the stomata it is present only towards the lower epidermis but if i draw the monocot leaf then upper epidermis also will be interrupted by stomata that's why every time i used to tell uh, monocot leaf it is called as amphistomatal leaf that means stomata present on both the sides whereas the dicot it is called as hypostomatal leaf that means stomata are present but only towards the lower uh, epidermal region that is the reason why it is called as it is means dicot dicot leaf it is called as uh, hypostomatal whereas uh, monocot it is called as amphistomatal hope you understood now come to the point crunch anatomy it is our point just i am explaining whereas inside between this upper epidermis and also lower epidermis you can see the photosynthetic tissue so this tissue which is present between upper epidermis and the lower epidermis it is called as a mesophyll tissue now if you take the mesophyll tissue of dicot the upper epidermis side may you can be able to see the mesophyte the photosynthetic tissue that is called as palisade parenchyma whereas towards the uh, lower epidermis you can be able to see the spongy parenchyma aapko dikh raha hai na see uh, upper pali side and this uh, inner uh, what you call uh, spongy whereas upper pali side tissue if you observe you can see clearly you can see na there are no int uh, intercellular spaces cells are closely packed hai na and cells are uh, more or less rod shaped structure aapko aapko dikh raha hai na clearly dikh raha hai na so as the cells are closely present and uh, they don't have intercellular spaces that is the reason why the upper side of the leaf in dicots it is dark green in its color whereas the lower side it consisting of spongy parenchyma see aapko clearly dikh raha hai na between the spongy parenchyma the cells consisting of intercellular spaces aapko clearly dikh raha hai see either intercellular spaces are there so due to intercellular spaces are present in spongy which is present towards the lower side and one more point is also lower epidermis it is also interrupted by the stomata due to these two reasons the lower side of the dicot leaf it is pale green in its color hope you understood what is the reason behind why the upper side is dark and the lower side is little pale when you compare it to the upper side that is all because uh, or because of presence of palisade towards upper parenchyma upper um, epidermis whereas presence of spongy parenchyma towards the lower epidermis so these points these are key points you have to remember these points okay now these mesophyll tissue that means palisade and also spongy and uh, sponges uh, sponges uh, palisades are irregular in their shape they don't have proper shape whereas they they are rod shaped aapko dikh raha hai na they are rod shaped now they consisting of this chlorophylls aapko dikh raha hai na green green dots either green dot green dot and these all green dots are actually not dots there they are actually cell organelles that organelle it is called as chloroplasts and this chloroplasts it helps in the perform in the performing photosynthetic activity hope you understood the anatomy of the leaf whereas the same anatomy if you compare to uh, the monocots monocots me there is no palisade and spongy is a differentiate nahi hote complete mesophyll tissue it is composed of single type of tissue that is called as spongy that means palisade parenchyma is absent in monocots whereas in dicots the mesophyll tissue it is differentiated into upper palisade and lower spongy these are key points students you have to remember these points because as uh, many times questions are coming on these points so uh, whatever the points i insist more that points you have to remember okay now if you take this mesophyll tissue this mesophyll tissue they consisting of chloroplasts which helps in performing the photosynthesis so idhar tak samajh mein aana now let us take this is the vascular region now the vascular region the upper side you can be able to see xylem and the lower side you can be able to see the phloem many times i told you not one two times so many times i told you basically xylem it is 
it is meant for the transport of the water whereas phloem also it helps in transport but it helps in the transport of the food material and both are conductive tissue that is conducting water and mineral salts whereas the phloem it is conducting food material but both are conducting only na? so this both together called as a vascular tissue hope you understood what is the meaning of vascular tissue where this vascular tissue it is covered by up the see my arrow mark up clearly the crane so this layer which is covering the uh, vascular tissue this is called as a bundle sheath okay up the crane so this is uh, see this is bundle sheath okay now this uh, single layer which is covering which is wrapping this conductive tissue it is called as bundle sheath now I, I told complete anatomy of the leaf now let me take to the let me go to the point now that is crunch anatomy what is this crunch anatomy crunch anatomy it is the bundle sheath of the what you call leaf anatomy it gets modified to a wreath like Dikrana, so this is a wreath like bundle bundle sheet. Okay, up clearly the crana. See, this is a bundle sheet cells. See how small they are, but either the crana they are grown big. See, either toda bada hogia cells and they developed like a series, like a wreath. Up to the crana wreath matlab kya uh, a series, a bundle, uh, a series a kind of arrangement which are hollow uh, and wreath like. Okay, so wreath like arrangement of this mesophyll tissue. Uh, I'm really sorry, wreath like arrangement of the bundle sheet cells that is called as crunch anatomy. So the cells are big, and also you clearly the crana either bundle sheet me there is no chloroplast. Did you observe anywhere green green dots? No, no, but here the bundle sheet also they becomes they 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 uh, they get chloroplasts. This green dots, I am showing it. So you please follow this arrow mark. So this is one one like this. So in bundle sheet also you can be able to see the chloroplasts. So that is the meaning of crunch anatomy. So let us take in a sentence format. The bundle sheet cells, they becomes large and they are arranged in a single layer around the vascular tissue like a wreath then this this arrangement is called as a crunch anatomy basically crunch means wreath okay a, a, a row a series okay a, a wreath like arrangement then that is called as crunch anatomy hope you understood what is the meaning of crunch anatomy now these bundle sheets of crunch anatomy they are characterized by they are having large number of chloroplasts see the crana so many number of chloroplasts are present up clearly the crana and they are thick walled that means when you compare the wall of normal bundle sheet cells with the crunch anatomy bundle sheet cells the cells are they are little thick the cell walls are little thick and they are impermeable to gases that means carbon dioxide and also oxygen none of the gases they can't be able to enter into this particular what you call uh, uh, bundle sheath cells hope you are understanding okay and there is there are no intracellular spaces nowhere you can be able to the space that is present between these cells and very important point i'm telling you see dimorphic chloroplasts are present in the leaf that means what is the meaning of this dimorphic uh, a very new word i think so you never heard this word dimorphic chloroplast means you hope you remember what is the structure of chloroplast the structure of the chloroplast if you take chloroplast it consisting of upper layer and also the inner layer because two layers are present it is called as a double membranous cell organelle whereas inside the chloroplast it, you can be able to see a fluid part and that is called as a stroma and in the stroma suspending in the stroma you can be able to see a sac like structures called as a thylakoids and these thylakoids they are present in groups and this groups of thylakoids it is called as a grana you all remember now and both the granas the adjacent granas they are connected by the stroma lamella 
hope you understood this is all the structure i explained in the cell biology also and in the introduction of the photosynthesis that means twice i explained this concept so hope you remember now what is the meaning of dimorphic chloroplast the same leaf it consisting of two types of chloroplasts what is the meaning of two types of chloroplasts one is a regular chloroplast which is having the thylakoid membranes which are present in form of grana please understand the chloroplast they consisting of the thylakoid membranes which are present in the group and the group of the thylakoid membranes thylakoid is called as grana now what is the meaning of second what is the second uh, what i call uh, chloroplast means their grana arrangement of the thylakoids in form of grana it is absent only the the stroma lamellas are present that means there is no grana system the thylakoids they elongates and they forms the stroma lamellas that means there is no grana system that means grana arrangement is absent whereas the other type of chloroplast is may the regular uh, granas are present so one first type of chloroplast sir the regular chloroplast in which the thylakoid membranes are arranged in form of the stalks called as grana and these granas are connected they are interconnected by stroma lamella whereas the next one is uh, the grana system is absent only the what is stroma lamella are only present then that is called as dimorphic chloroplast that means same leaf if it consisting of two different types of a chloroplastus then that is called as dimorphic chloroplastus hope you understood see i wrote it also chloroplastus of bundle sheath or crunch cells are large without grana grana system is absent whereas a mesophyll tissue they consisting of grana that means the same leaf see this is the I, i'll tell you so this is the what do you call c4 plant na? now this is all mesophyll cells now the mesophyll cell they consisting of the regular chloroplasts whereas the bundle sheath they consisting of the chloroplasts without any grana only the stroma lamella only present then that is called as dimorphic that means either uh, a, a that we in one way and either uh, in another way that means the same leaf it consisting of two different types of chloroplasts then that is called as dimorphic chloroplast hope you understood students where the c4 plant the c4 pathway it takes place in mesophyll cells also and also in bundle sheath cells that means both the cells are involved as both the cells are involved it is called as cooperative photosynthesis hope you understood why it is called as cooperative that means this mesophyll tissue and a bundle sheath uh, bundle sheath cells by mutual understanding with a proper understanding though no they equally contribute in the photosynthesis that's why it is also called as cooperative photosynthesis where the rubisco hope you remember what is the meaning of rubisco many times i told you rubisco it is one of the most existing enzyme that is present in this world and this rubisco it accepts the carbon dioxide the primary acceptor of the carbon dioxide in c3 pathway it is nothing but rubisco aapka yaad hai na whereas this rubisco it is present in the bundle sheath cells uh, whereas while uh, the what do you call mesophyll cells they consisting of uh, pepcoase what is the meaning of pe what do you call uh, pp uh, carboxylase pepcoase matlab uh, it is called as phospho enol pyruvic carboxylase and oxygenase okay so pepco is okay this this is present in the mesophyll cells and this point elaborately i am going to explain just give me one minute this point you i think so you did not understand properly while i'm while i'm explaining you don't understand now but when i am explaining about what i call mechanism then this point clearly will understand okay let us take the mechanism hope you understood i am thinking so you understood crunch anatomy again i will tell you what is crunch anatomy in a very like very short recap okay crunch anatomy means basically the leaf if you take the cross section inside of the leaf you can see the vascular tissue uh, the vascular tissue which is composed of xylem and phloem where this is xylem and phloem which is called as vascular tissue it is covered by the single layer of the cells and that single layer of cells which is covering the conductive tissue that is called as 
bundle sheath now if you take cranj anatomy this cranj anatomy may this bundle sheath cells they becomes large and they becomes large and also they they convert themselves into a kind of series a wreath like structure then that is called as cranj anatomy where these cells are very thick when you compare to the normal bundle sheath cells this cranj anatomy bundle sheath cells are thick and they are impermeable to gases that means it don't accept any oxygen or carbon dioxide to pass through them then what is the meaning of impermeable it don't allow any gas to pass through it that means either carbon dioxide nor what you call oxygen they can't be able to enter into this particular cells then that is called as impermeable hope you understood and there are no intracellular spaces and one of the important point and also a very very important question also what you need to understand is they consisting of dimorphic chloroplast that means the same leaf it consisting of the chloroplast with grana and the chloroplast without grana that means only stroma lamella if they are present that means the same leaf consisting of two different types of chloroplasts then that is called as a dimorphic chloroplast hope you understood what is the meaning of cranj anatomy now let us go for the mechanism of cranj anatomy so i am sorry mechanism of c4 pathway yes uh, we entered into the mechanism of c4 pathway now uh, this is carbon dioxide this is atmospheric carbon dioxide which is present in the gaseous state now this carbon dioxide it reacts with some water when it reacts with water it releases one hydrogen now it converts into bicarbonate see hco3 now hco3 basically means bicarbonate so in the bicarbonate form that means carbon dioxide by reacting with water it converts into bicarbonate form in bicarbonate form it reacts with pep what is the meaning of pep phospho enol pyruvate again i repeat phospho enol pyruvate which is a three carbon compound how many three carbon it consisting of three carbons okay now this is a three carbon compound which is called as pep phospho enol pyruvic acid or pyruvate you write anything meaning is same you don't worry pyruvic acid pyruvate what's wrong all are same okay now this bicarbonate it reacts with pep in the presence of pep carboxylase or very simply because na no, after i teach you definitely go through some uh, some textbooks then in some textbooks they write pepco pepco then uh, uh, sir told uh, pe, what is it pep carboxylase and uh, either uh, pepco like uh, what to follow you please don't get confused here pepco matlab carboxylase and oxygenase they they don't want to write with a bada word that's why they simply in a short form they are writing pepco but here it is elaborated phospho enol pyruvic carboxylase oxygenase so that is pepco whereas here a little like medium form mein pep carboxylase is given actually the full name kya hai na phospho enol pyruvic carboxylase and oxygenase that is a full name of this enzyme very simply you can write pepco p e p c o or otherwise you can take this form also pep carboxylase see this only words are different but meaning is same it is basically an enzyme so in the presence of pepco this pep phosphoenol pyruvic acid which is a three carbon one it acts up this what you call carbon from in form of bicarbonate now here one carbon dioxide it is coming na one carbon it is coming and here how many carbons are there just now i told you three carbons 3 plus 1 kitna hota hai 4 so it forms a four carbon compound that is called as oxaloacetic acid o a a every time you can be able to write oxaloacetic acid that's why simply you can write o a a oxaloacetic acid o a a i think you understood which is a four carbon four carbon compound now this is a first carboxylation okay what is the meaning of carboxylation the process of addition of carbon dioxide 
see here the first carboxylation it is taking place and the first carbon dioxide acceptor carbon acceptor it is nothing but phosphoenol pyruvic acid now please compare this with c3 pathway c3 pathway this carbon dioxide enters into the mesophyll and after it is entering into the mesophyll it is joining with rubp yadena and that is carboxylation in c3 pathway whereas in c4 pathway the carboxylation it is primary carbon acceptor is nothing but pep such a this is these simple simple points itna small small points only they will be asked in your neat exam that you need to understand okay just listening nahi that the, the, while you are listening itna chota chota points this points are very very important so what is a primary carbon acceptor in c4 pathway then what will be your answer phosphoenol pyruvic acid very simply you can call it as pep whereas what is a, a carbon acceptor primary carbon acceptor of c3 pathway then rubp ribulose 15 biphosphate or you can write bisphosphate also there is no problem you don't worry about that now hope you understood so this is first carboxylation whereas aapko yaad aa raha hai na in c3 pathway mein ek hi carboxylation only one carboxylation see that it will go to the avoid uh, reduction baad mein regeneration hai na whereas here two times carboxylation takes place why you know this carbon this carbon fixation uh, this uh, c3 for, uh, c4 pathway it is taking place in two cells so first cell in mesophyll cell mein ek carboxylation and dusra carboxylation is taking place in the bundle sheet that means twice two two times the process it is taking place that you need to understand this important important points you have to remember okay now i think hope you understood the first point first step of the what i call c3 uh, sorry c4 pathway again if you understand also just for safety ke liye a very very short recap very short time i'll finish it carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere in gaseous form it reacts with water now after reacting with water it converts to bicarbonate form and in form of bicarbonate it reacts with phosphoenol pyruvic acid which is a three carbon compound and it converts into a four carbon compound called as oxaloacetic acid which is a four carbon one because इधर एक कार्बन है इधर तीन कार्बन से तीन प्लस एक कितना होगा फोर सो ऑक्सोलिसिटिक एसिड फोर बराबर हो गया ना वो एक प्लस तीन सो थ्री प्लस वन कितना होगा फोर हो गया ना ना दिस रिएक्शन इट इज कैटलाइज बाय पीईपी कार्बोक्सिलेस और पेपको पीईपीसीओ ओके व्हाट इज अ फुल फॉर्म ऑफ पेपको जस्ट टू थ्री मिनट्स बैक ऑन आई टोल यू फॉस्फो इनॉल पायरविक कार्बोक्सिलेस एंड ऑक्सीजनेस इतना बड़ा थोड़ा दिक्कत हो जाएगा ना आपको ये बार बार लिखने में इसलिए वेरी सिंपली यू कैन कॉल इट एज पेपको और यू कैन ऑल्सो कॉल इट एज और पी पी कार्बोक्सिलेस ओके होप यू अंडरस्टूड स्टूडेंट्स ना लेट एस गो फॉर द सेकेंड स्टेप हाँ सी फॉर आई फॉर गोट टू टेल यू वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट Uh, in the first step in the first step the first step what is a first formed stable compound oxalic acid which is having how many carbons tell me four carbons as oxaloacetic acid which is a four carbon compound is a first formed stable compound of this cycle of this pathway that is the reason why it is called as c4 pathway now you understood na and you remember na i'll show you this oxaloacetic acid it is also called as dicarboxylic acid that's why it is also called as a dca cycle hope you understood na why it is called as c4 cycle and why it is called as a dca cycle aapko samajh mein aaya na now let us go for second step now the second step is this oxaloacetic acid it converts itself into malate in the presence of one enzyme that is called as malate dehydrogenase okay again i repeat second step is oxaloacetic acid it releases some hydrogens and these hydrogens will be accepted by nadp and it converts into nadph2 okay now by releasing some hydrogens it converts into malate 
and this second step conversion of oxaloacetic acid into malate by re by releasing some hydrogens this second step it is catalyzed by one enzyme called as malate dehydrogenase hope you understood now this is malate formation now in some times that means in few cases may what happens you know the oxaloacetic acid it reacts with ammonia and then it converts into aspartic acid and aspartic acid is also four carbon just like the compound the molecule it is changing but the pathway do not change sometimes but 90 95 percentage of the cases may mallet only will be formed whereas five percentage of cases may it may converts into the aspartic acid but either mallet or in form of aspartic acid it ultimately it goes into the bundle sheet only and then it further uh, what you call uh, participate in the mechanism okay now this mallet it can it enters into the bundle sheet now either the either the uh, what you call, uh, up to here this all took place in the mesophyll cell now in the in the form of mallet it enters into the bundle sheet cells now in bundle sheet cell this mallet which is having how many carbons tell me four carbons now it releases some hydrogens and also it releases one carbon now kitna carbon say four carbons four minus one kitna hoga three carbons hai na? now a carbon bahar gaya. now this mallet me a carbon bahar gaya na isliye only three carbons are left and this is a three carbon compound it is called as pyruvic acid of course you can simply call it as pyruvate hope you understood now this carbon dioxide which is released into the bundle sheath it obviously reacts with the ribulose 1 5 biphosphate and it converts into the uh, pga and then it converts in the trio sugar and trio sugar it converts into aapko pata hai na glucose samaj mein na that means please try to understand this c3 pathway me the c3 cycle it is taking place in the mesophyll whereas in c4 pathway may this c3 cycle it is taking place in the bundle sheet why this is the very very important question you have to understand why why it is taking place in bundle sheet happily it can takes place in mesophyll na? but instead that why it has taken place in bundle sheet what is the reason please listen carefully if you don't understand this point Itna, that means 20-25 minutes lecture whatever I explain it gets wasted so I am telling you the actual secret now please listen now Rubisco Rubisco aapko pata hai na? it is sensitive to the uh, carbon dioxide and also oxygen I also told you uh, what I call photorespiration me I told you na, Rubisco it is one of the most existing enzyme of this world and it is sensitive to carbon dioxide also and it is also sensitive to oxygen and based on the percentage that means uh, carbon dioxide zyada hai to it reacts with carbon dioxide whereas oxygen zyada hai to and temperature zyada hai to it reacts with oxygen ye sab yaad hai na aapko now because rubp is is very sensitive to oxygen especially in high temperature now all the plants may uh, especially in summer during summer what happens you know the temperature increases and obviously in higher temperature what happens rubisco it obviously reacts with the oxygen then all the cells that means all the plants during high temperatures they enters into the photorespiration and photorespiration is a yada rena photorespiration is a wasteful process am i correct or not either other either other goom rahe fir bhi there is no energy am i correct or not and on top of it it is wasting atp also aapko yaad hai na aapko you should understand photorespiration then only you can be able to understand this so photorespiration is a wasteful process aapko samaj mein hai na so to avoid this to avoid this particular photorespiration every time that is the reason why either se nikal rahe for mesophyll say that uh, rubisco it is it is uh, taking out and it is it is storing in the what you call uh, what you call in a bank that is called as bundle sheet for example uh, some 50,000 rupees are there 
एंड यू हैव लॉट ऑफ टेंशन दैट एक वट गल एक तीफ आएगा एंड चोरी करेगा एंड आई लूज माई मनी देन वॉट यू विल डू यू विल गिव टू यू आर वन ऑफ द बेस्ट फ्रेंड वेर द सेफ्टी इज देर अदरवाइज यू विल गो टू बैंक एम ए करेक्ट नॉट एंड देन यू विल डिपॉजिट दैट मनी लाइक दैट इधर उसको उसको डरा रहे अरे कब टेम्परेचर ज़्यादा होगा एंड इमीडिएटली माई रूबिस को इट इज़ नॉट लिजनिंग टू मी इट इज़ रिएक्टिंग विथ ऑक्सीजन इंस्टेड ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड मैं क्या करूँ इट इज़ इन टेंशन दैट इज द रीज़न वाई दिस मीसोफिल टिश्यू में मुझे मैं एक काम करेगा आई डोंट कीप दिस रूबिस को विथ मी आई विल हाइड दिस पर्टिकुलर रूबिस को इन टू दिस बंडल शीट वाई बंडल शीट इट इज मॉडिफाइड इन टू क्रैंज एनाटमी बिकॉज इन क्रैंज एनाटमी में बंडल शीट इट इज इम्परमिबल टू गैसेस सो यू डोंट एलो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ऑल्सो यू डोंट एलो ऑक्सीजन ऑल्सो इधर दिख रहे हैं आपको इट इज नॉट एक्सेप्टिंग कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड दैट इज अ रीजन वाई इट एक्सेप्टेड मैलेट एंड मैलेट आफ्टर एंटरिंग इन टू बंडल शीट इट रिलीज द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड आउट अभी याद है ना आई थिंक परफेक्टली अंडरस्टूड आई थिंक सो नाउ सी कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सी इधर वट एगल एटमोसफेयर में गैस है ना नाउ दिस गैस सीधा इट कांट एंटर लाइक दिस वाई इट इज नॉट एंटरिंग वाई इतना नाटक क्यों कर रहे हैं कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज एंटरिंग इन टू द मीसोफिल टिश्यू एंड मीसोफिल टिश्यू में फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज कन्वर्टिंग इन टू ऑक्सलेट सॉरी ऑक्सोलेसिटिक एसिड एंड ऑक्सोलेसिटिक एसिड इट इज कन्वर्टिंग इन टू मैलिक एसिड एंड देन मैलिक एसिड इट इज एंटरिंग इन टू द बंडल शीट इतना नाटक क्यों करना है वाट इज द रीजन द रीजन इज आर यू बी पी आई एम सॉरी रूबिस्को इज वेरी वेरी सेंसिटिव टू ऑक्सीजन एस्पेशली इन हाई टेम्परेचर एंड एवरी प्लांट इट हैज टू अंडर गो इट हैज टू टॉलरेट द समर बिकॉज एवरी समर साल में एवरी वट एक एवरी ईयर समर तो आ रहे हैं ना एंड आज कल तो समर तो पूरा पूरा वट एक साल समर ही है अंडरस्टैंड आई एटलीस्ट आई डिड नॉट आई एम नॉट अब्जर्विंग एनी टाइम वट एक विंटर एंड रेन ऑल्सो दिस दिस टाइम थोड़ा रेन आ रहे हैं बट एस्पेशल आई स्टिल रिमेंबर टू इयर्स बैक देर आर नो रेन्स ओन दैट मीन्स मोस्टली समर ओनली दैट मीन्स मोस्टली वट एक द टेम्परेचर इट इज लिटिल हई ओनली इन सच अ हई टेम्परेचर में वाट एपेंस आर यू बी पी मीसोफिल सेल्स सेल्स नहीं सुन रहे हाउ यू आर नॉट लिजनिंग टू मी लाइक दैट मीसोफिल सेल्स को वट आर रूबिस्को इज ऑल्सो नॉट लिजनिंग टू वट एक मीसोफिल सेल इट इज इंस्टेड ऑफ रिएक्टिंग विथ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इट इज रिएक्टिंग विथ ऑक्सीजन सो दैट्स वाई इट चेंज इट्स पोजिशन एंड इट इज प्लेसड इन द बंडल शीट सेल्स दिस इज अ सीक्रेट आई वॉन्टेड टू टेल यू आई थिंक यू अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज अ सीक्रेट बिहाइंड द सी फोर वट एक पाथवे वाई नॉट सी थ्री वाई इट इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन सी फोर फॉर्म द रीजन इज टू सेव टू प्रोटेक्ट दिस Rubisco to protect this particular uh, Rubisco from high temperature and mixing up with oxygen. Now you understood, now students. I think so. I explained in a very detailed way. But still, if you have any confusion, please ask me. Hundred percent, I will answer you because this is important question. You have to understand. So how many ever times you ask, and that many times I will definitely answer you. So please don't hesitate to ask me any doubt. Okay. now the second carboxylation it is taking place in the bundle sheet see either ek carboxylation pp and here uh, second carboxylation with rubp so the ultimate pathway to produce the food material is obviously nothing but c3 pathway only just to, to safeguard this particular rubisco itna natak chal rahe hope you understood now mallet go back to the actual actual uh, what again pathway mallet which is four carbon it is removing one carbon dioxide so char mein ek bahar aa gaya kitna three so this mallet by losing one carbon dioxide it is converting into a three carbon pyruvic acid now in the form of pyruvic acid it go back to mesophyll and again in mesophyll mein this pyruvic acid it it is using atps and then it is converting into the phosphoenol pyruvic acid that means the regeneration of phosphoenol pyruvic acid now here also one important point is there what is that important point you know see this is pyruvate hai na kidhar se aaya this bundle sheet se now this pyruvate it is converting again into 
फॉस्फोइनॉल पायरविक एसिड दैट मीन्स रीजेनरेशन ऑफ फॉस्फोइनॉल पायरविक एसिड बट इधर आपको दिख रहा है ना फॉर रीजेनरेशन इट इज यूजिंग ए टी पी याद रख वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एंड दिस पॉइंट इज मेनी टाइम्स आस्ट सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो इट इट इज इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ ए टी पी इट इज कन्वर्टिंग इन टू पी पी नाउ हियर ए टी पी यूजली कन्वर्ट्स इन टू वॉट ए डी पी दैट मीन्स वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ए टी पी होप यू ऑल नो बट स्टिल आई एम टेलिंग यू एडिनोसिन ट्राई फॉस्फेट दैट मीन्स एडिनोसिन इट इज एडेड टू थ्री फॉस्फेट्स सो एडिनोसिन ट्राई फॉस्फेट है ना नाउ वेन एवर एनर्जी चाहिए सेल को क्या होता है ए टी पी इट लूजेस वन फॉस्फेट सो दैट तीन में एक बाहर आ गया देन कितना दो बाकी है सो एडिनोसिन डाई फॉस्फेट होगा एम ए करेक्ट नॉट बट इधर देखो दिख रहे हैं ना क्लियरली दिख रहे हैं ना अदरवाइज यू फॉलो मई आर मार्क इधर क्या है ए एम पी है दैट मीन्स वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ए एम पी एडिनोस इन मोनो फॉस्फेट हो गया दैट मीन्स ए टी पी यूजली लूजेस वन फॉस्फेट एंड कन्वर्ट्स इन टू ए डी पी बट इन सी फोर पाथवे इन द रीजनरेशन ऑफ द फॉस्फोइनॉल पायरविक एसिड वन ए टी पी इट इज लूजिंग टू फॉस्फेट्स एंड देन इट इज कन्वर्टिंग इन टू दैट मीन्स तीन में दो बाहर आ गया कितना रहेगा ये की रहेगा दैट्स वाई ए एम पी नव यू अंडरस्टूड ना सो वन ए टी पी यूटिलाइज यूसेज इट इज इक्वल इन टू टू ए टी पी यूटिलाइजेशन आपको समझ में ना वॉट इज द लॉजिक अगेन अगेन आई टेल यू द लॉजिक बिकॉज because you need to understand if you understand also once again you listen now atp whenever cell need energy atp it converts into adp hai na that means it is losing one phosphate and then it is converting into adp hai na but in the resynthesis the regeneration of phosphoenol pyruvic acid ek atp it is losing two phosphates and two phosphates bahar aa gaya मतलब कितना फॉस्फेट्स बाकी है एडिनोसिन ट्राई फॉस्फेट में थ्री फॉस्फेट्स में दो बाहर आ गया सो so, कितना बाकी है एक ही सो दैट्स वाई एडिनोसिन मोनो फॉस्फेट दैट मीन्स एक ए टी पी यूटिलाइजेशन कैन आई कैन आई कंसिडर इट इज इक्वल टू टू ए टी पी यूटिलाइजेशन हंड्रेड परसेंट बिकॉज दोनों फॉस्फेट्स बाहर आ रही है सो इधर द रीजनरेशन ऑफ फॉस्फोइनॉल पायरविक एसिड के लिए वन ए टी पी यूटिलाइजेशन इज इक्वल टू टू ए टी पी यूटिलाइजेशन hope you understood so the phosphoenol pyruvic acid it comes back and again the same cycle now please understand either malet it released how many carbon dioxides ek hi that means ek cycle mein ek carbon dioxide add ho rahe hai am i correct not that means to produce one glucose molecule how many times the cycle need to be repeated six times the cycle need to be repeated aapko remember you remember na c3 cycle mein i told you वन साइकिल में ओनली वन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ग्लूकोज के लिए कितना कितना और कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कार्बन चाहिए सिक्स बिकॉज सी सिक्स एच ट्वेल्व ओ सिक्स दैट मीन्स सी सिक्स सिक्स कार्बन आर देर दैट मीन्स सिक्स टाइम्स दिस साइकिल नीड टू बी रिपीटेड एम आई करेक्ट नॉट सो टू प्रोड्यूस वन ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल साइकिल नीड टू बी रिपीटेड फॉर सिक्स टाइम्स नव यू अंडरस्टूड ना ना let us take how many atps and how many nadph2 are utilized now number of atps consumed are 30 atps cases sir aise kaise hote hain i'll tell you for this only i wrote i wrote it here na c3 pathway ke liye 18 atps again please don't ask me c3 pathway i explained in a very clear manner if you forget no problem sometimes i also forget it's a human thing you usually forget so no problem again go back to c3 pathway and you again see how many atps are consumed one c3 pathway pathway one glucose formation ke liye 18 atps are required and regeneration of the phosphoenol pyruvic acid how many atps are utilized six times the cycle it is getting repeated that means six atps but here the atp it is converting into amp that means six atps when they are converting into atps it is equivalent to one atp consumption is equivalent to two atps that's why it is equal to 12 atps now 18 plus 12 kitna hoga 30 that's why the number of atps utilized in c4 pathway is 30 atps and nadph2s me there is no changes 
in C3 cycle may NADHs will be utilized and same number of NADHs. See, because nowhere NADHs are utilized. Up to the Kirana Pura cycle may NADHs are formed, but they are not utilized. See, either a NADH2 is formed and NADPH2, and here NADPH2 is this forming, whereas nowhere NADPH2 is utilized. That means only in C3 pathway only you you are you are seeing you are observing the NADPS2 formation uh, sorry utilization so either NADPS2 are 12 but ATPs are 30 hope you I am thinking so you understood the C4 pathway in a clear way C4 pathway is a very very important one if you don't understand you please ask me any single doubt any single doubt it is okay for me but please try to understand every point of C4 pathway because it is a very very important concept. Thank you so much.